and we have been kicked live. <laughs> yeah, you slacker. Oh, they can't hear you. Um, now they can hear you. They can't hear me? They can oh, hear okay. Now. I had you oh. unmuted. Now you're unmuted. So say awesome. all those words again. I didn't Joe. say anything. Joe didn't so, say words. Uh, yeah, it's Friday. So we're playing Heart here on Defenders of Kobold. Um, last week, what did we do? Um, got into, I guess, sequentially, um, Dan wasn't allowed into the um the druid village so you had to sneak around a little bit uh you guys made your way over to the pharmacy um spoke with the guy there who commissioned you all to go clear out a tunnel system between the pharmacy and grip station um for the vermisian and the thing blocking it was a giant mechanical rhino with a drill for a horn, which you all fought and killed with uh, a lot of strategizing and some coordinated stealth attacks. Uh, you met an old man that challenged or was going to bet on Chuck to win a fight, and then you guys rigged it by the fight being against Jake instead. Uh, so some probably first ever heart PVP, mm -hmm. uh, but it worked out in both of your favor somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't remember. I was permanently brain damaged by the fight. It's fine. True. Oh yeah, you worse. still have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I got a rail yeah. gun. And you get a rail gun. And then Dan got a big rail gun. It's a uh, it's a modified. Um, tool that's supposed to put railroad spikes into these train lines uh, but now it just shoots railroad spikes at whoever he wants uh, and then we were picking it up with you guys still at grip station um, you were going to head over to the next station down the track uh, there's a few attractions and things that you could do here um, grip station is basically this uh, super quiet station that's inside of what looks like a giant geode of crystals um, and too much vibrations too much noise can kind of cause these crystals which grow constantly to fall down and impale somebody they're quite large they're about the size of some of them are the size of people some of them are the size of like school buses they kind of all range um, so one of the things to do here is you could go out on like an expedition to harvest some of these crystals they're useful if you chop them up and want to sell them. Uh, but then you knew that the next station along the way had some things for you guys to do as well. Um, I think that's enough of a recap for us to get into player introductions. So we'll go around and remind everyone who we're playing tonight before we get into it. So uh, I'm going by Zoom order. Chuck, who are oh, you playing? Me. Hi, I'm Chuck. Uh, I'm playing Zurl. He's the face fister, and he's a great guy. Uh, he eats things, and he fights things, and he still has a cone on because uh, he ate some pig brain mushroom, and it made him sick. His tummy was upset. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you're mostly healed from that. Yeah. Some stitches that are you know, probably going to need to be removed at some point, maybe. I'll just chew them out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, John, who are you playing? Yeah. So I'm John. I'm playing uh, Sir Galvin, uh, who is a Vermissian knight, a uh, Order of the Pilot. Uh, he just stomps around in his uh, Space Marine armor, uh, steampunk sta Space Marine armor, basically. And uh, yeah, he is just kind of trying to protect everyone because he made a mistake and got a bunch of people killed in the past. So he's trying to not let that happen again. Zero makes it difficult. I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. I wasn't paying I, attention, uh, so I really don't. <laughs> this does not surprise me. April, who are you playing? I wasn't paying attention either. Hi, I'm April. I'm playing Genevieve. She's a junk mage who uh, is starting to collect pets. 
Uh, we yes. have a pity bat, bat pity, however you want to go about it. And then I can't remember the other animal that we uh, I got you a kinda, mole. A, a mole. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a mole. Yeah. So we're starting a zoo. Yeah, you're uh, playing <laughs> a side game of Pokemon Go going on over here. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. We can you have three zoo. pets, can... actually. Yeah, and Galvin has robot a robot dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah, the robot dog, the cave dog, and the vulture mole. We could start a zoo Phenomenal. and stack what would be people. Oh. I, you know, I'm okay on that one. I'm <laughs> all right not having more of those around. Just imagine all the fresh honey we can I believe... Get. Uh, John was able to to use the uh, robot dog as a companion, like a bond. Yep. Yep. Um, so that's basically a separate health pool that you can offload stress to. Mm -hmm. um, after the last session, April is now able to do the same thing with the cave dog because uh, it's finally been long enough that they are bonded as well. Uh, and Vulture Mole, I don't know about that. It's probably just a little chaos thing. That <laughs> is... We tied it up. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got two of them, and you ate one of them in front of it. So yeah. it's, <laughs> it's not going to be friends with you. Or maybe it is. You know, it is. That's halfway to domestication, right? <laughs> it is <laughs> something like that. I don't think it's too uh, keen about being in the party, but it's uh, there. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, back into introductions, though. Uh, Jake, who are you playing? Uh, I'm playing Devoran, who once studied to be an engineer, but is now an apiarist. Uh, he likes bees. He likes them so much, he now has a queen bee living in inside of his body, and uh, as well as an army of smaller bees living inside of his body. Uh, he's covered in pustules that can explode whenever he's damaged, and he has been beaten so badly, now he thinks of the world as meat. Poor fella. I did that too. Yeah. <laughs> forgot about that yep uh and then dan who are you playing dan and i'm playing theo he's basically just the guy who shoots things and now he's got a big gun that he may also just plug into uh the random characters you know name is sir galvin right. <laughs> <laughs> and use yeah. it to power up yep there's gonna be like random places where part of the vermissian or something is like powered up that you'll be able to plug into uh or you can deal some supply stress to galvin and you know yeah, steal some of his that's power fine. you know it's fine you know it, it i i'm now envisioning it like uh the one character from the borderlands game where it's got the turret on the tank thing that you can hop on while they summon their tank i don't know anyway move on i'm rambling i haven't played <laughs> borderlands so. oh okay that, that he, he can fun. take the supplies damage joe's too cool yeah. for borderlands <laughs> he only plays csgo <laughs> I don't play that game anymore, but I did play that sure. too much. Um, also, so yeah, may or may he's... not have destroyed an orphanage somewhere. Hey. Oh yeah, it, it... that's a you thing. I understand what that means, Eddie. Hello. Yeah, I think we've fleshed out the um, the backstory of Galvin and Theo's uh, misdeeds last session or two, uh, yeah. where. You know, Galvin, I think you had a bridge collapse and then yep. we decided that it collapsed onto an orphanage that was under mm -hmm. Theo's care. And uh, he is now not well liked by certain areas because of this. Hey, Bert. How's it going, man? Which I, I don't think you healed that exile, but you don't necessarily mm -hmm. need to if you're not going back there. Nah. It'd be kind of pricey, too. But, uh, eh. who cares if a few druids hate that you killed all their orphans? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if their parents don't care, why should you? Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're in Grip Station. Um, was there anything you guys were wanting to do here before moving on, taking the train down the tracks to your next attraction? No. Mm -hmm. Um, again, pretty so. much it's just if you want to harvest crystals, it's kind of dangerous because it might fall on you, but uh, they could be valuable if you wanted to sell them. Is there, um, uh, there is not a bar in Grip Station, but there definitely is one in the next location. 
you would know if you were asking around for a bar they don't say like yeah you know there's you can kind of find like provisions and things here but you can't really be rowdy here you know it's gotta can't get too noise or else it causes a ruckus and then things start falling and paling people from the ceiling so if you want a bar you'll have to go down to uh next station okay i mean i i really don't give a shit about some crystals you're all ready to go yeah sure well, i might all right. take a crack at getting a crystal or two no okay. they're like okay geography <laughs> crystals not like crack <laughs> crystals Okay, maybe I like geog <laughs> geology <laughs> crystals. Thank you. Would you would you like some assistance? If you wouldn't mind. Sure. Sure. All right. So, best way to go out and get those. Uh, oh, damn it! If geez. Genevieve is going with Sir Galvin, then I'll tag along. <laughs> I'll go too. I can't stand all these people in this stupid station. Not a one of them has bees. They don't. I guess I'll go too. So <laughs> <laughs> everyone leaves me behind. I'm going and I'm dragging you all with me. Right. That seems all correct. right. So they're called the <laughs> Sinian Crystalline Caves. Um, and there's basically, again, it's like you're on the inside of this giant, massive geode that's buried in the ground. There's all of these crystals kind of growing out everywhere. Um, there's various scaffolding that's been built out, all sorts of these platforms and things for some people to go out. Um, and you see that there's this one particularly long, like wooden bridge that goes out towards the wall more. And there's kind of this cutout called the, uh, Sinian crystalline caves. Um, just kind of the way that air pressure works and things on the inside of this, uh, lots of wind goes through here and you hear it just whistling between. The different crystals and you can almost hear like the odd melody just the way that the pitch kind of lines up on them every so often um it's kept very quiet very dark and um there's not a whole lot of foot traffic out here occasionally you'll see someone kind of coming back they've got like a pack that's got all sorts of just little lumps of crystal they've harvested um everyone's kind of keeping to themselves not a lot of talking in fear that they'll knock something loose uh you're able to make it out so if you want to try and harvest some of these let's do a um it's the best one either a So we could do a sneak or a delve test, uh, or if there's any other test, like maybe discern, kind of look for a good spot. Um, I would take sneak because just being quiet in general will buy you more time to um, get a good spot picked out. Uh, okay. And then this will be, um, I believe, desolate. Or no, it's a haven or technology here. Ooh, and I'll roll a delve technology for some crystals. Do I, could, I could do uh, discern technology. All right. Do those tests at standard. Um, are you both attempting these at the same time at different like spots? Yes. Yeah, that works. Yeah. I will say no, no. if you're attempting them at the same time, it'll be risky. Ooh. Oh. Should we roll again then? Uh you can, yes. Okay. Um or if you wanted to stagger your things. Yeah, we'll do that. that. Oh whoops. So I you kinda notice like the sound kinda as you're chipping away. Hear it reverberating. So it's a very delicate area. I'm like so... imagining these like stalactites coming down off the ceiling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why dig in the dirt when we can get it from the source? Do I see a large rock? I can just shoot one. Uh, yeah, there's so there's a few places that uh, these seem to like kind of grow constantly. 
Um, but there's been a few places that are recently harvested that there's still some rock and rubble that hasn't regrown crystals yet. Oh yeah. I pick up one of the motherfuckers and I throw it really goddamn hard at one of the crystals hanging from the ceiling. Uh, I'll let you do a kill. All right. Technology. Uh, you can get a mastery, but also do it a risky. Oh, okay. I get a success at a cost, Joe. What do you? Uh, what's okay. the dice size for this one? And then this area, I believe, is only a uh, d6. If it's at a cost, do we roll stress? I don't remember. Yes. Uh, okay. And then I tell you what the stress is here. So here. Um, John, so you're harvesting, uh, and as you do, um, you're able to break your crystal free, um, but right as you're pulling it out, another one falls from above and takes a crap at you. So roll that, uh, D6, and these are extremely sharp, so it is piercing as sure. this crystal just drops from the ceiling and lands on you. All right, so... Uh, blood stress? Yep, D6 blood okay. stress. Piercing. Okay. And let me just make sure to add that on my sheet. All right. And then um, who else? You got success at a cost as well, uh, Genevieve? Yes. Okay, same thing. Uh, you knock a few crystals loose and they just kind of fall at you. So if you roll a d6 blood, um, don't take that much stress. Oh, wait. Oops. Wrong. Still no fallout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I know. I'm... And this is piercing, so you're not able to use any... Um, mm -hmm. No, I, I, I took all four. And... Mm -hmm. Okay. Go when you're ready, uh, and then, I fucking failed. Okay. Uh, looks like Jake, you didn't. Um, you, are you succeeded? You didn't take any damage from it. Yep. Genevieve, Major what? fallout. Oh hey. man. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, Did you have a lot of stress already from something. Uh, I had five mind stress. Uh okay. Yeah. Right, from the stress of setting up the uh, the drill rhino encounter. Um, okay. Yeah, let's roll that major fallout here. Uh, and then Chuck, you're also going to take uh, just a d6. So you go to like, catch it, and it impales, <laughs> just like slices you. And it's you like hit one that's not exactly above the platform, so it just kind of tumbles out of your reach and this goes into blood. the abyss below. Yeah, so this would be blood as it slices you. Let me pull that major fallout here. Ah, uh, no fallout. Uh, but anyone that did get a success, though, you get a D6 uh, of these crystals. Ooh, okay. Source. Uh, rollable tables, major fallout, major blood fallout. Downed. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> I think. What does this one say? This is the one where you're like you're not able to move. I'm pretty right? sure. You can um... be moved under your own power, and you're barely clinging on to life or consciousness. You can be moved around by others, but without medical attention, you're not going anywhere. It can be upgraded to dying. Hooray! All right, <laughs> guys. Amen. I just wanted rocks, guys. I just wanted pretty rocks. <laughs> this one, it's like it kind of as it breaks free, the heavier base just really clocks you over the head, and you're just out of it. Um, your brain's in. So yeah, oh, someone else potatoes. is able to move her. <laughs> if you want to try to attempt to mend her here, you can, or you can try to bring her back where maybe it's safer. I'll um, mend her with a bee sting. Oh, oh my gosh. we don't All have right. a choice, Genevieve. 
a little brain came out, a little mashed potatoes went back well, she, in. She got major fallout, so shouldn't her blood stress go away? Yeah, all your it stress will. is gone. Uh, and and so yeah. what this is what this is basically going to do is um, if you are able to heal her, it's going to make removing the condition cheaper. Okay. Um, I closed my roll window. Unless, I, I don't know if you have... Um, no, I don't have anything to remove a condition, unfortunately. Okay, I think so. Um, you can probably find a doctor back at Grip Station. People are often getting cut up and bashed by these crystals, so there's doctors on hand that you'll be able I've to... I've probably seen this a few times. <laughs> yeah. Just a few. That's, <laughs> Mash that's how the doctors go out and uh, get their crystal harvest, is just waiting for people to kill themselves uh, <laughs> and getting paid in crystals. But uh, yeah, Jake, success if you're able cost. to do that, put a sticker uh, on there. Success of cost. I put, a, uh, okay. uh, I put Oprah on. We're gonna see. So. Oprah, bees. <laughs> you get a bee. You get a bee. Everyone gets a bee. And one of my favorites. Okay, Jake. So you're gonna take this as um, echo stress, as this is kind of like your bees are acting strange as you're sending them to do this. Uh, there seems to be kind of like something about the area and the crystal and there's like some energy that is not really vibing with them and they're uh, pretty unhappy about taking uh, any orders here. <laughs> All right. Um, what's the die size for success at a cost? Uh, uh, it would be a D6, so D6 okay. Echo here. Come on. Eh, okay. First one, I've got one Echo protection, so I'm good. My cat's trying awesome. to murder my strings again. Yeah, it's not piercing or anything. So. <laughs> Great. Okay. But yeah, as a success. So uh, you're able to kind of, you sting all around where she was bashed. It kind of swells the wound a little bit. So it's not quite as open. And it seems like it'll be a little bit easier That's for fun. the doctor to take care of it. So much cheaper than not being treated. Uh, you feel that. quite a lot better. Um, maybe not... Uh, about the bees, but physically, <laughs> you know, <laughs> feels slightly better. Oh, but, uh, be yeah, better soon. Able to... oh. oh, man. Oh, I attacked you. <laughs> <laughs> Taking some mind stress from Dan. Uh... <laughs> yes. Oh, I should probably reveal the location here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you guys want to go back, I'll let you just spend. Uh, it'll be a D6 now. Uh, if you want to burn one of your D6 resources, April, uh, or I guess anyone can, uh, you can remove that down. I will. Uh, so, Doctor tends to you. Roll a D6 on a resource? Uh, so, you don't need to roll for getting rid of the condition. Uh, if it were healing stress, you'd be rolling it. But uh, you're just burning the whole thing uh, oh, okay. to get rid of this uh, fallout. I will get rid yeah. of my. You see, there's like a doctor's office, and it's a guy. He's like right on the edge of the dock <laughs> as people are coming back. He's got a little <laughs> stash behind like a, a locked gate. You can see of several crystals. A lot of them with blood stains from other people with other similar <laughs> conditions and uh, stories as you probably. Uh, totally normal. Got a fire red hot poker in it, like this will help. <laughs> <laughs> see all the mashed potatoes in there, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But all right, uh, some of you at least profited from this. I profited and... by doing nothing. <laughs> you did. <Yes. laughs> okay, uh, so now you make it back. Um, there's a train arriving that's about to head off to the next. Um, and on the, it's got like this little placard on the top and it says to Haines Station. All right. Uh, one thing you notice about these trains too is they move incredibly slowly. Uh, seems like the tracks themselves are robust enough that they could go at speed and the trains themselves definitely could. Uh, but if they move at any speed above about like five to six miles an hour, it starts shaking things too much and causes all sorts of damage, so they have to run at extremely low speed. Um, so you 
guys all pile on. It's a almost mind-numbingly boring, slow train ride out of here. Uh, looks like you can see there's kind of a few brochures and things that are in this train. Looks like it was originally intended to be kind of a tourist attraction that you're going through these crystal caves and you can see all these cool crystals and things, but all the lights have burnt out and there's no one that's paying to maintain them. Uh, so it's just pitch black almost outside of the train except for a few dim lights inside to see where you're going around and uh, just a slow, <laughs> slow uh, exodus from this station. I'll just um, keep a here... lookout for hexagons in the crystal shapes. Yeah, it's a fair amount of those. Ooh, neat. Hexagon. Uh, Especially in the some of the areas where like it hasn't been harvested for a while, some of the crystals have grown out for quite a long time, just over the voids. Um, and you'll occasionally just catch like the glint of them as they're falling freely down into the depths below. Um, but yeah, after about an hour or so, the train starts to pick up speed. You feel like um, they've shoveled some more into it, and it's there's kind of a jolt as you feel it at first and then starts to pick up and you see that the the walls of the area kind of come in you're in like a tunnel now you seem to be out of the cave for the most part uh and then this heavily distorted voice just comes through like four more hours till hain station listen could we could we have gotten there faster by walking um, you probably Bored. could have gotten to this part faster than by walking, but uh, <laughs> now that this, the train's <laughs> sped up, it's definitely the fastest way to get there. We there yet? All right. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We get there. Are we there, there yet? One of the only other passengers that you see on the train uh, is a very tall, gaunt man. Uh, he's wearing glasses that are like only on his nose, and they're much too small the for either glasses. of his eyes. Yeah, almost. Um, he's wearing like just a very thin, uh, almost. It looks kind of like a, a turtleneck sweater, uh, but it's kind of missing the arms. He's sitting there. He's got a small book on his lap, his legs folded, and uh, looks over at the lot of you, and uh, it's like, oh, you're a, are any of you? Adventuring types, like I see, oh, I've got uh, some magnificent weapons and things there. I can tell, uh, if, have you uh, had eventful times up until now? You could say. Yeah. Genevieve hugs her cave dog closer, like, I don't know who you are. I'm sure I those are delicious them. memories. They probably fetch a good price at the bazaar. Why well, now? Delicious <laughs> memories? <laughs> Yum yum. What? Yes. Uh, Listen, man, that's really you, creepy. Do you know anything about where you're going? No. No. Do you? Oh, uh, yes, I'm uh, going back home. I live in the bazaar. Uh, well, there's Hain Station, but that's, that's the boring part. It's supposed to be like a little touristy trap, but uh, they never finished it, as most things down here. Uh, but no, down in the bazaar, uh, those such as yourselves, it looks like you've got quite a lot of uh, bartering power with any of your past uh, memories and things. Uh, people like to buy that sort of stuff down there uh, in exchange for all sorts of goodies. Like, Man. we just got to, like, tell them a story? Um, you have to have a story to tell. I uh, don't necessarily have to tell it, but there are ways that having stories to tell can be valuable uh, and exchanged for several goods. I mean, I could tell the story about how I ate that mushroom pig, how I ate its brains. I got sick and I had my chest cut open. I was paralyzed for a while. Then I had to wear a cone. It was I think that, you're that spending cone. your precious hours in yeah, the cone. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it kind of like 
grimaces a little bit at the like still shaved and stitched <laughs> slightly yeah. bloody stomach that you've got going on there it's like yeah, oh. mm-hmm. well uh may, might fetch a penny or two there but well, uh, if you ever do run into me in my shop uh once i make it back then i'll be happy to offload some of those memories from you and uh see what i can do so do we lose the memories after we give them no oh, well, of course that's what I thought. But you gain some things in return, perhaps. Hmm. Interesting. Things that you may not have otherwise have been able to get. But like octo coolers. Like like what? what? Octo coolers. What what are those? Oh, it was a promotion and like the Oh come on, Sir God. It was like eighties or nineties. <laughs> For the Ghostbusters movie, like it was ecto-coolers. like ecto coolers. Ecto. That's it. Yes. It's Break your own Those are all that was before our time. Come on, man, don't do us like that. <laughs> I, I was like, sometimes I forget I think, that you're all just goddamn children. And I think there was something called octo coolers, like I'm a decade. Google it. I wonder if it had anything to do with the octo bomb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think it did. <laughs> Probably just a coincidence. <laughs> As a tangent, I once went to a hell house with a group of people, and we were the only uh, people in Halloween costumes. And uh, mm-hmm. one of my buddies was the Octomom. <laughs> so we go through like this uh, horrible accident where somebody has died. We go through hell. We go through heaven. We meet Jesus. After we get out of heaven... Uh, we recognize that one of the Octomom's baby's heads have fallen off. <laughs> so we're just like, that's oh, okay. He's with Jesus now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one didn't make it. Seven out of eight. <laughs> Seven out of eight is not bad. Seven out. It's better than the game. most. They did not appreciate yeah. our presence there, to be sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's the shotgun approach, you know. Yeah. Um, Oh, right. enough babies in a wall? <laughs> oh, it's like else. that old catapult game. Yeah, you know? yeah, that one that came out when I was a grown adult. Catapult Babies in a Wall is a future DOK stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are already destroyed an orphanage, so what's it feel more? I mean, what's, what's eight more babies? You stick with what you know. Uh, rest hey. of the ride as you guys kind of weave through the tunnels here. Uh, Eventually it starts kind of getting a little bit brighter. Um, And there's kind of like this, you can't really tell what the stench is at first, Um, but uh, as it grows a little bit more pungent, it's almost like fishy and like with a hint of rot to it. Um, And this is, it's almost overpowering as the tunnel opens up. And you're hit with this kind of like orange, reddish light. God, this um, place smells great. Let's go get some. Food. I'm gonna start we'll doing the, jumping. The train jacks starts to. Uh... <laughs> my yeah. my sweat smells like scented candles, so I'm gonna just do jumping jacks. It would, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That probably not that bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as you come out of the tunnel, your the train kind of hooks sharply to the the right. You see it start to kind of do this half circle type uh, track around. And you see that you're inside of kind of a domed chamber. Uh, and a lot on the top, you see all sorts of these like almost candle like type flames, all these small sources of light that have this reddish hue. Um, and they all kind of reflect around the room and shows this giant station that's suspended by all sorts of these metal cables. Uh, that you see the track eventually loops around to. And below it is a giant circular frozen lake. Um, and looks like there was at some point some landscaping that they were doing, trying to kind of match up the, the edges and things. Looks like this was supposed to be another touristy type attraction. But uh, at some point that was kind of abandoned. And some of the places look like an even you know, dome line and other places are a lot more rough and there's just kind of some rubble that's collapsed from parts of the wall that's now scattered across the Mm. ice. Uh, But you see kind of through 
the ice is a little bit scuffed up and it's kind of like uh got that uh like all those air bubbles and things where it's not quite clear um but you see there's something frozen underneath it that's quite massive it almost takes up the entirety of the lake it's got all sorts of these like little tendrils maybe it's like a jellyfish or a squid or something like that it's kind of hard to tell because the center of it uh you see has been dug out and there's this kind of structure built around it and then you see all sorts of these colorful tents and things uh mm -hmm. that protrude around it out onto the ice i wonder if we and, can uh, eat it man with the the glasses he's like ah oh, that's the bazaar where i work you know if you're able to make your way down there I'm sure you'll find all sorts of fun things to buy uh reminds me of that stations uh, that one eddie murphy song where it's all like where do bad folks go when they die they go to a lake that's cold and die again no i don't think that's right i mean chuck is your old man brain not working right today I I thought your lady just wanted to party all the time. That was <laughs> that is an actual Eddie Murphy song. I know, yeah. My girl wants to party all, the time, party all the time. That's right, April. Eddie Murphy had a a music career with Rick James. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I'll be surprised. This episode is brought to you by Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to say that. He's Coming back from the brink of irrelevance. He's catapulting. Uh, what matters yeah. is when he tries to sue us, our names will be associated with him. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's it's true. just a win-win for us regardless. It's the yeah, long con. Uh, that we'll that bad publicity is good publicity. <laughs> I'm sure they'll mention us by name, but not say nobody Twitch streamers. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> no, they're gonna play All this right. clip. If you're playing this clip, TMZ. Uh, hi. I was gonna say something clever, but nothing happened. Nice try. The anyway, sitting vultures, TMZ. <laughs> yeah. So the train kind of continues its trek around the outside of this dome, starts to hook back in um as it comes to a stop you're on this like suspended kind of cable bridge like structure uh you see there's all sorts of these little wire like lifts that go to and from the surface of the ice below uh as you step off you see there's a few people waiting to take the train back um you see there is a group of uh individuals that it's like a lot of characters some of them are kind of distant like their gaze they've all kind of got like the th thousand yard stare thing going on um a few of them look like they've maybe given up too much in the bazaar below uh and they kind of stumble their way mindlessly onto the the uh train and sit down and uh, as the man steps off he's like i hope to see you there and he walks off past the crowd once that fucker's off the train like we're not actually going to do that, are we? Because that sounds no. sketchy as fuck. Yeah. I don't think they could get anything from me. I don't know. Like, RB's got good awesome. moves. I feel like that uh, goes against my my goal here of gaining knowledge. <laughs> losing be. it. Yeah. Although I have many horrible memories, I wouldn't want to give them up. That would be like giving up a piece of me and no thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on what the payoff would be. Oh shit. We could give up your dog's <gasps> memory of how we killed his ex owner. Actually, you know, that's not a bad idea. I thought See? you were I thought you were gonna stop there no, and there we were gonna <laughs> Maybe the vulture mole, just all of his memories. We can just start with a fresh slate there. Yeah. Like we can teach him Actually, how to poop again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to potty train a vulture mole. <laughs> <laughs> can you potty train a vulture mole? Can we? Can I mean, Joe, can we? <laughs> uh, it'll be risky. But, uh, <laughs> talk like the one that we have sure right now is potty trained. I mean, we'll like, sell these memories for some pee pads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they have those. The yeah. ultra mole size. Yeah. All right. Big old potty pads. 
as you guys are stepping off the train, um, Dan, you, meant, you uh, notice perhaps some old colleagues of yours, but uh, a pack of people that are uh, clearly from like the Hound Order, uh, and they're all there's about three of them, kind of making chit chat, small talk amongst themselves, and their eyes kind of perk up as they see you, like ah, it's the orphan killer. <laughs> Guys, God. I thought you'd stay away from trains. But trains are fun. Oh, well, yeah. But, you know, I was just giving you a hard time. Like, I mean, like there's weekend, not always but... orphans around trains, right? Yeah, more often than you think, I guess. With enough perseverance, they mm-hmm. can be. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I guess you got yourself a new crew and a uh, lapdog, I think, as they point over to you, Chuck. Listen, here. Fuck you. Yeah. Oh, it's got a mouth. It does. It does. Yeah, I use it on your mom oh. regularly. She <laughs> <laughs> yeah. called me your little lapdog. One of them seems quite upset at that. It's out that jar of peanut butter and it's over, man. <laughs> she forgets your dad's name every day of the week. <laughs> Daryl! Oh my god. <laughs> He's that starting to fight! <laughs> I am just that, that may be. That may be. Sir, pardon my friend here. It's been a long trip and he needs a bar. That was a visual I did not want. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get some peanut butter to borrow, but I don't think they will that. <laughs> <laughs> no one gets peanut butter anymore. I'm going to have to wait that one out. I would say uh, get Jiffy, but that's not how shit goes with your mom. Jiffy's he's got a... For fast. One of them, you see kind of a flash of light, and they've got a blade in their hand, and he kind of puts it right up against your stomach there, Chuck. He's like, I think a few of these stitches might come loose here if you keep talking face. like that. I, I'm like trying to intercede. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he started it. Test. <laughs> For who? <laughs> uh, Chuck. Okay. Hang on just a second. And then, uh, what are you trying to do uh, exactly, John? I'm I'm trying to like Special interpose card. myself between the two of them before bloodshed occurs. I used one of the okay. blanked advantages. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you did. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say um, it's too late. Says. Okay. <laughs> and then Galvin. Um, you trying to step in the middle here? What would that be? Hey Joe, um, you have a plan for tonight, right? <laughs> What's bad is this is part of it. Mm-hmm. There's a few ways this could play out. This might be it. We'll see. It's this is kind of uh, Chuck and John battling over who gets their point. You know what? This, I'll, I'll, I'll make it easier. I'll make it easier rather than. St- interpose in the middle i will just vent steam to like make everybody not be able to see each other as this happens i'm just like okay yeah you could do that for sure yeah. um i don't think that you have to do reduces, a roll for that reduces the stress values that people might mm-hmm. take yeah so we'll just roll that um chuck yeah um got a success on that and you're doing a bite what damage is that just a d4, d4 probably piercing Three damage. Piercing. <laughs> All right. He's got a helmet on and kind of like a little bit of like almost a chain like coif type thing. Yeah. Uh, is there a particular part of him that you're trying to bite on his a head? Face. Like for the nose. Face. For the nose. Yeah. One cheek to the other. Not, not a face biter. Let me All show right. you how I kiss your mom. <laughs> well, you have to aim I just crunch. <laughs> It's uh, slightly different. <laughs> I think you're supposed to use less teeth. That's what I keep take telling his mom, first. but she doesn't listen. <laughs> so, yeah, you take a chunk of his nose off. 
Um, oh, if you don't have the Haven domain, you do now. Ha ha! Kick ass. Hooray! He kind of stumbles back. He drops the knife. Has got blood splurting from his nose. He screams. Um, other two hounds like are reaching for their guns to oh, that's draw. Funny. Your scream sounds just like your mom's. <laughs> fellas, fellas, this is th oh, this is between this the is, two of this them. This is my chance to give them the stare down. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Uh, how does that work again? Just uh, by looking at someone is enough to get them to throw down their weapons. <laughs> My weapon or my gaze function as a kill D6 ranged. Okay. <laughs> and I took the minor perk that uh, my legendary, you know, now your gaze works on things that shouldn't be scared of you. Okay. Are you able to hit multiple at the same time with that? It doesn't specifically say so, but I mean, uh, I mean, I can treat these guys kind of as a pack too. So we'll say yeah. like it's one source. So uh, yeah, do you have to do a roll as that, or I guess it's it's a kill, like you're, yeah, I do just a regular it as like a kill like a roll weapon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do that, um, and you don't. It'll be just standard. Uh, okay. It'll be Haven or. Uh, what's here? I'm, I'm gonna take one of our advantages on. So. Yeah, you should do that. I'll mark it off. Uh, Everybody, calm the fuck down. There's also cursed in this domain. Oh mm. my god. Mm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Crit oh, success. All right. Yeah. Roll that. Uh, it's, you said it's a d6? Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, that's hell yeah. Look at that. Oof. All right. Uh, so that'll be 10. Yeah, that's plenty. So. They start reaching for your weapon or for their weapons, and you just dagger eyes at them, <laughs> and they uh, Show kind us of how stop. Looks, Dan. John, Don't now you're able to think about it. <laughs> able to stand in front, and you're you're moving between them. Uh, is there anything else you're trying to say to them, John? Uh, I pretty much just you know why don't you just pick your friend up. And head on off and just call it a day. Just get on out of here. They, I'll, uh, send a, because... I'll send a healing bee at the guy. <laughs> That's a good message. message. <laughs> it kind of swells back to <laughs> the size as those should be. They kind of look around a little bit on the ground to see, like, like because they look at his face and see he's missing part of his nose. Then they look around on the ground for a bit and see the blood like on your mouth That's and then right, shudder a little bit. Shit. <laughs> and they just take their friend and like, what the fuck, man? Smells like fingers. Yeah. Oh, tastes like fingers. <laughs> Quit picking your nose, you nasty fucker. <laughs> I don't think that'll be a problem anymore. <laughs> Probably not. All right. Yeah. And then you heal them back up. So I'll say... That satisfies um, John. You helped de-escalate that. Yay! Uh, there was technically bloodshed, but it could have been a lot worse. So that works. Um, then and then check. You can also yeah, take. Yeah, that's orders. right. Checking off. Getting trouble with the hounds. Uh, okay. I didn't want to pick trouble <laughs> yeah, with you. You're a good yep. hound. They're an ass hound. You okay. sniff butts? They, they, well, I mean... Well, not they, anymore, but... Yeah. <clears throat> um, After this, after it kind of calms down, your steam kind of clears out of the area, Uh, you hear what sounds like kind of soft sobbing off to the side. Like, you just hear... There's the occasional, like, venting and stuff and sounds of other trains reaching the station. Uh, but really, like, the only voice that stands out. It sounds like someone's kind of, like, crying nearby. It sounds like an old... Maybe, like, an old woman. Just a soft, like... Ah, 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 like, really over-the-top, pitiful sobs. 
And then it doesn't take you long too to see that um, kind of over in the corner, just on the edge of the past the train station uh, and before the lifts that would bring you down to the bazaar. Uh, you see there is an old woman just kind of like wrapped around in a blanket and just rocking slowly in a chair. Uh, she's surrounded by a bunch of empty canvases. And she's got a big canvas like on an easel in front of her and it's just painted solid blue. And she's just rocking back and forth. She says, it was not worth it. Not worth it at all. No inspiration. Genevieve's going to wander over to her and, ma'am, why are you wallowing? So, I've always wanted to be an artist, and now at my old age, I finally have the time for it. And she kind of like points around to the, the, she's got a few paints out and things, and they've kind of dried. They've been sitting there for a long time. So it's like, I was never good at it, though, so I figured I'd offer up some of my my memories. It's a way to buy artistic ability, but... Now I don't remember anything, so I have no inspiration to go off of anymore. Why not just... paint the uh, magnificence that is my friends and I here? Look what at us mean? in all of our glory. <laughs> <laughs> she, she like stiffles a little bit and looks at him. It's like, why do you have blood on your mouth? Oh, I ate someone's nose. Oh, he did. Uh, it's normal for him. Magnificent, isn't it? Okay. That's, that's a word. That's a word. Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, do you have I any flowers I could draw? Um. She looks around. She's like, uh, I don't think I do. Uh, maybe I, I think I have a vase or something back at my home. Uh, yeah. Why? I I. Uh, that's my business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is art not the pursuit of creating something beautiful? And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So even though you may not feel as though you are an artist, deep down you truly are. That was beautiful, I think. Uh, I guess I could try to paint your friend here. She if only you told her, her that over. before she sold all of her memories away. <laughs> when you get your memories back. Uh... I suppose I could if they haven't been sold or traded already. Uh, it was uh, the man's probably still got them? It wasn't too long ago. Listen, team huddle, everyone. All right, let's go find who bought this artist memories and get them back. Are we gonna like uh, violence them out of them or some other way? <laughs> I mean. If you let me come up with a plan, I'll definitely violence the fuck out of those memories. Oh, that's that's why I figured I'd ask first. Yeah, they violent. made an old okay. woman cry. Right? How are you not upset about this? Yeah, come on, man. Look at those tears. Look at them. Have some heart. She's still got mm. some. Listen, I'll let you Let's come up with can... a plan, or if we want to do things like <laughs> noble and shit, we'll let Sir Galvin do it. Thanks. I'm not really looking forward to getting exiled out of another place. Relax, they won't exile us. What's one more? There won't be a place to be exiled from. There's that option, too. That was really they really creepy, don't man. stay anymore after your first <laughs> exile. Uh, you know, we so if, after you guys kind of break up from your huddle, um, you see that she's been like painting and the, it's been turned away from you and occasionally she's kind of like looking over and going back to it. Oh, if I think she's painting uh, me, I should pose a little bit. Flex the glutes. <laughs> All right. And Doing that coy over of, the shoulder look as you flex. <laughs> oh, look at that. Got a little bit of a duck look going back on. At it. Mm -hmm. You see, like, no, no, there's you're some like kind of... brown and gray paint that are kind of like dripping off the side of it. And then she flips it around, and it's almost like a photorealistic rendition of Zerl doing like a, a pose. Wow. And he's got one wow. of his claws out, and there's blood 
like coming from his mouth and dripping down. Uh, she, you don't have like the surgical scar, but instead you have this like giant, like more heroic looking scar that just kind of stems up all across your chest. You've got more muscles and things. She's Old like, hey, lady, does, does this look okay? Looking at that, I have never been more aroused. You did an amazing job. <laughs> You are a fucking genius. I, I'm not like sure it. if that's the what I wanted out of it, but uh, I'm glad you like it. It's amazing. There's a lot what of money in painting. Spot name right of of the person that you sold your memories to. Do you do you remember that at least? Well, that kind of is commission. I don't really remember much about him. He's a tall man. Has small glasses. That's about all I remember. Oh, that's that one asshole. Mm-hmm. Considering he bored us to death for several hours on a train, I wouldn't mind beating him up. Interesting. Wait a second. I'll be back. He's, he's got a Bye. shot somewhere down in the the bazaar, and uh, you know, this is you. There's great things to buy down there, and great things to learn, but I'd. Avoid, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you don't really realize how much you're losing. It's hard to remember yeah. when you've lost a memory. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, well, I we'll, suppose we'll, I am a, able to paint now. Yeah, we'll, we'll head that way and hopefully we'll be able to do something for you. And... She looks back at it and she kind of remembers like what you said about it, Chuck. She's like, I think you should have this. I don't know if I want it anymore. That is <laughs> she awesome. Gives you the painting. Thank you. She's like, no problem. All right. As yeah. Just add, add a, uh, it'll be D8. Um, sexy Zerl painting. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be a haven resource. Uh, you'll be able to trade for it. <laughs> well, maybe. Otherwise, the other option, besides the plan of violence, would be that one of us is willing to give up a memory to trade for a memory. I vote violence. I I figured y'all would, but I'm I willing to give you all the lead the on this one. <sighs> I can't give up my memories, though. They're of a famous person who's me. So, and were you still asking around for a a bar there, Chuck? Yes. Right. They say uh, as you're like kind of asking around, uh, most people are like there's not really much in the station anymore. Like there's some empty places, but they're mainly, you know, like they point over where it looks like there was going to be a pub made, and then where there looks like there was going to be like a little tavern set up but they're all kind of boarded up and they're just being used as storage and spare parts for the trains in the station now uh they're like this is all pretty much just the station um but uh down below there is a grubbers grubbers uh, we can get more grub yeah. hooks. Oh, you know i might sit that one out oh that's fine you go ahead but maybe more people will show up to shake it down shake down this one and you could start a fight with them Oh, I, I like, like the sound of that. You know what, Sir Galvin? I don't <laughs> care what Theo says about you while you're sleeping. <laughs> you're not that terrible. I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's. I think she says, uh, like, I guess if you're go. able to make your way up here, I'll paint whatever you want uh, as, a, as a token of my gratitude if you are able to get even just one memory back. I don't she remember if I have family. I'm duplicating the pose. <laughs> She's like, please do that somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and put it on your pants. Like, That's a trick on you. I don't wear it. I, I know. Live and let's die. Thank mm -hmm. you for that raid. We're playing hearts. Mm -hmm. I am zero. Yes. And we're going to go fight a man with morpheus glasses to get a grandmother's memories back yep so she can see pictures. 
All right. Uh, also, um, this counts as a station, Jake. So this will be yeah. your third for missing Next. station. Bing, bang, boom. Okay. Also, Jake, as you are, um, you know, you guys are getting ready to make sure you have everything as you're stepping off the train and you go into your pack. Um, see, like, like one of the flaps on your pack is folded a little bit differently. Like, usually you don't button it all the way, but it's closed and buttoned uh, on one of the pockets on the exterior. Um, as you investigate that pocket and open it up, you see that there's like a small paper envelope. Hmm. It doesn't look familiar to you. Ah, I will inspect this mysterious envelope. Right. You see that. If I wrote it on your thing already. All right. Uh, so you see that you. It looks just to be a little like brown paperish envelope. You open it. And you see that there's like a small piece of parchment in there, uh, and then there's like a small kind of wrapped up package. And the paper uh, has. Is your character able to read? Yes. I guess. Okay. He, he went to engineering uh, school. Yeah, you went to the school. That would make sense. Yeah. Engineers so, don't know how to read. Absolutely. No. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> but uh, you see, uh, work it's on just a little feelings. handwritten note. It's very, like, kind of flowy. Um, the, it, the handwriting's nice, but it doesn't really line up very well. Looks like it's kind of out of practice. But it says, I saw you forgot these. Signed, Emrys. And you see a small seed and a small glass bead. <laughs> right away, I'll be like, "Oh, right, break the glass bead, and then uh, I'll cram the seed in the wound." All right. Similar thing. As soon as you're you like make flesh contact with the bead, it cracks and then explodes into your skin and just crawls its way up your arteries and into your arm kind of it's really painful especially as it goes like past your wrist bones and things but then it kind of evens out as it goes up farther into your arm and works its way into your body and the seed as it uh makes contact with the blood of your finger from this too uh it cracks open just a bit you see a small sprout and then it just kind of slithers into your skin as well cool Then you can mark off your other consume something of the heart. Ooh. Is this like, handy. I mean, you're a, a mom now? Um, more like. Did you try uh, to conceal this in any way? No. <laughs> okay. I saw them and went, ooh, and then just did it. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's fine. You know what? It's fine. I've seen you spit bees out of your mouth in swarms so whatever it's not the weirdest thing that's ever it's happened with you around so so not mm -hmm. <laughs> remember that fine. time you killed that other guy that used to travel with us the oh, fake hell guy yes. yeah i remember him See, that was because he didn't have the seed and i didn't kill him i just kind of tricked him into killing himself although i didn't know that was going to happen <laughs> Just, so just I, I did take that as a risk. So I, I, I guess, yeah, maybe I killed him. Maybe. I mean, technically, the person who gave him the thing killed him. Right, right. I didn't kill him. I tricked him into killing himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would hold up in a play for the, the episode. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's not worth taking a, a risk with a witch. <laughs> what? What's the worst that can happen? Okay. Right? Uh, well, so as you guys make death. your way around, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not Being so bad. crystallized, glass erupting from your body oh, yeah, until that would, you die. That would, that would suck ass. Yeah. I don't know. You got cut open like a, like a salmon, uh, and did. you're fine. I am. Maybe I'm yep. immortal and shit. Did they did they get all of your uh, 
uh, what is it? Uh, caviar idea? Or... I didn't even know I had caviar in me. I mean, kind of like when you open up a, a vacuum just... and just kind of beat out all the stuff that you've <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> I was just imagining that it was the little like table looking things that you find in the middle of your pizza to hold the box up. Oh, it's just a million yeah. of those. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't it in the pizza weeks. if it wasn't edible. It's a tiny pizza for your pizza. Right? Mm, it's yeah. a table for mice. Never mind. It's a good size for that. <laughs> All right. Um, so you guys are able to find. There is like a, there's kind of like this elevator system. It's not powered, um, or at least not uh, mechanically, but there's like all sorts of these pulleys rigged up and there's people uh, standing up there and they're calling out like, you know, next load, next next ride. How far and, up um, are we? Uh, it's pretty far out. Like the, okay. so you guys are like on this platform that's slightly suspended by these like questionably intact uh, like rusted, like I think like aircraft cable that type of thing. Uh, it's just all over the place. Some of them have snapped Dude. here and there, so it's drooping a little bit on one side. They're fine, um, probably. You estimate maybe a good hundred, hundred and fifty feet okay. above the frozen I, lake. I won't step off the elevator this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would appreciate that because it hurt last time I followed you. There are, um, <laughs> that's at least above the lake itself. So there is kind of like this structure. So the lake seems to have been frozen to contain whatever this creature used to be. And that's kind of, it seems like that's what's making this kind of fishy smell. There used to be some sort of beast or thing that they captured that was supposed to be a, the tourist attraction of this area. Uh, but they've kind of dug into it for some reason, and now there's all sorts of these structures kind of around it. So it might be able to land on one of the taller structures uh, instead of. But you're on your own. No, no. <laughs> are we are we worried about this this little tram's ability to support the weight of everyone on it? No, because if you see um, things like, then it will be a problem. But if you don't, it won't. There is there, kind of not a, lot, a whole you know, lot of people. There's logic to that. Yeah. Uh, it looks like there's like several of these platforms that are usually only have maybe three to four people on them. So all five of you, especially Sir Gallen, probably would have to ride by himself. <laughs> yeah. But uh, maybe the rest of you could fit on uh, one. But you would definitely have to take multiple okay. trips. I wasn't that worried about it. I just happened to have had it, you know, my next beat, which is kick someone off something really tall. So... Everybody. I'm it's not fine. writing with Earl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wise decision. Yes. But yeah, you guys make it down. Uh, every so often it kind of stops or jolts or like hits a bit of the cable that's kind of like rusted more. So the pulleys have like a hard time going through it. Um, but for the most part, it's a pretty easy lift all the way down. And you make it into the center of... The Harvest Bazaar. Uh, spell is a little bit worse down here, um, but it's kind of in waves. As you're going around, there's all sorts of these shops. Some of them have food, so that kind of overpowers it. Other ones have like all sorts of other incenses and things burning. Um, most of the shops have something going on to overpower the smell because they're down here a lot. Now, is the smell just coming from the fish, or is there like other more magical smelling smells? Um, so you definitely smell stuff coming from the shops, and the fish smell uh, seems to just be from like the beast that died and has been partially dug up now in, okay. in certain areas. Yeah, you're down. How long bizarre. until Zerl eats some of it? Listen, anyone? I was I already thinking minutes. about it. It smells I, good. I was sitting here. I saw his face light up, and yeah. I was like, oh, "There it is." And it's I'll, this is one of the most densely packed areas that you've been into. It's a pretty crowded market. There's people everywhere. You kind of have to watch where you're walking so you don't bump into somebody. Um, 
it's kind of this drone of chatter of everyone calling out and people calling people over to go to their different businesses. There's all sorts of stuff that you can buy. Um, and estimate it's probably good 50 to 60 buildings here. So it might take a little bit to find oh, wow. um, that particular hut that you're looking for. And they're all just kind of spread out across this ice. Um, some of them are just temporary little tents that are set up. All sorts of things. And uh, a lot of the shops are kind of more normal like you're uh, used to. But a lot of them seem to have these kind of weird looking contraptions. They seem to be like these giant metal cylinders that have all sorts of these glass beads and strange lights on them. And these odd tubes that come out to like a little metal spike. And you see near these are usually chairs with lots of straps and restraints. Uh, and you figure that might be related to some of the, the memory shenanigans that D are going Devorin. on that you hear of. Devorin, you like glass beads. Uh, do you want to try one? Sure. <laughs> All right. That's like a trap. So as you walk up, um, all sorts of people are just kind of calling out. And as you're walking towards this, you see a man comes over. Um, he's kind of a short man. You just see like the tufts of his hair first as he's behind his counter. And he steps around it. He's hunched over a little bit. He's got a mechanical eye that you didn't see at first as he was turned. Uh, and as he turns to look at you, it kind of zooms in on you know, just a bit. He says, like, oh, like, have you found my arms? Hey, what? Oh, I guess not. Ah, my arms. That's a pair of them I lost. It should be able to crawl in or climb around here somewhere. If you see him, bring him back here. They're just scurrying yeah. about? <clears throat> yeah, it's an extra set of arms. Uh, you can buy them if you want. I'll put them on you for, uh, you know, cheaper than some other people might. But I already have arms. Would you take my arms yeah. and then give me your arms? Why? No, you get more arms. You can never have enough arms. Oh. Zerl, that sounds True. like a bet up your alley. Imagine like we find the arms and we the get the arms. I can touch with an extra pair of arms. Oh, that's not how I'd have phrased that, but okay. You get to pick where the arms go. You could eat four uh, things well, at they once. They go on your back. They have to fuse into your spinal column, so uh, usually people do this kind of thing. Devorin, you could get the arms because that I don't know, I've seen crazy as shit. Oh, yeah, you could use them to shoot more guns. It's also true. Yeah, people are doing for that. I would just use them all sorts of things that so. normal arms could do. You do more of with more arms. Could we? Oh, could we put the arms on the Robo Dog? Oh shit! The Robo Dog does not need. Does it have a spine? Arms. I presume it has a does it have spine. It does technically, kind of, sort of. It has he circuits. And technically, does he doesn't need extra arms. He has four has legs, he... and he is wonderful the way he is. All right, well, They're not exactly robo arms. You can put them on your dog. I know. Hey, now, you're but awesome. technically, both of them are my dog, so watch it. Well, he's the one who made friends. Put anyway, one on the vulture like, mole. Well, let's put him on the mole. That uh, fucker no, doesn't no. like anyone. It'll win him over. I don't, know if, I don't know if that would happen like that. <laughs> A mole. I mean, I guess ask... anything's worth a shot. Well, if we did that, it might die of blood loss because it's circular. It probably doesn't pump it up blood to go through two arms. Yeah, yeah. And then itself. So if you put it on that thing, it'd be more arm than mole. I, I don't think it'll. Uh, I don't think its heart's made for that. Oh. Let's talk about arms on dogs. Made my dog walk away. <laughs> they're they're like people-sized arms. That's a pretty small mole. Yeah. Well, I'll pull him out of my backpack I mean, where I still have Whatever you pay for, back. I'll do. It's just I you mean, might not I mean, like the results on that one. What if he one? just walked around it, on it, his it, arms and looked comical? Be like Sebulba. So is there like a place that your arms like to hang out when they go for a walk? Or... <laughs> I just rewatched that movie the other day. It's... Nice. But why? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> he gets his feet going, too. So yeah. while we're bickering over who's going to get mm. the extra arms, what's this fella doing? <laughs> what's uh, who doing? The the guy who's trying to sell the, the arms. Salesman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the black arms dealer. Arms dealer. <laughs> and if you find them, I can put them on. Otherwise, you know, I, I can Wait, do. Wait, how did you uh, lose them? 
out they they got out of the points over and there's like a rack that has all sorts of like leather straps and one of them's kind of like loose and pulled off their arm he's like i usually keep them there but sometimes so, they crawl away so they kind of have a mind of their own uh yeah oh. you know, the more you talk the more i like these arms gives a real meaning to the phantom stranger some people are able to kind of suppress their thought it, it just kind of depends on how well it bonds to you you know Mixed results. Most people are happy about them. I, they don't come back. All right. Do you have any flowers? Ah, flowers. It looks round. Give me higher low, Jake. Uh, low. Oh, all right. Uh... Fifty-six. It's like you know, I did the other day. But I don't know if they've run off to. Never mind what? their own too. Well, see, nah, that's a jump. Oh shit! You're funny. It's like, but uh, no, I'm sorry. No flowers here. Uh, I'm sure there's some somewhere. There's a you know, all sorts I, of I mean, it smells horrible here. here. I, I would imagine somebody would have something. Yeah. Like, that's why I've got that thing. And it's just got like a vent that's got this kind of like green smoke coming out of it. Do you know, know where the guy who buys memories is? I buy memories. We all do. A lot of us do. That's what this uh, thing's for. Does. Do you know of a guy with really stupid small glasses? You know, they don't really do anything, but they're just kind of like hanging on the bridge of his nose. Uh, the tall one or the short one? Tall, tall, tall one. one. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, what's his name again? Dilbert. Uh, that's Garak. Oh, I was right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Garak. He is, uh, he's in the big middle building. It's kind of hard to get in there. You usually have to have an appointment. Wait, why is he up there? What's so, what's so oh, special he's, about there? Uh, he's one of the, you know, the, uh, this, Certain people take different types of contracts. Like, I'm, I'm not really certified or anything, so I just kind of do anyone that comes by, but uh, he does the bigger jobs. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Wait, what? Don't worry about it. Something. I am worried about it. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> Phrasing. Uh, Phrasing. Yep. Yeah. Oh, those are well, the- I'll look for yeah, some arms yeah. for a bit, I guess. Oh, wait, I have an idea. Is there a structure that I can climb up that I see with my eyes? Uh, biggest structure is definitely like the center thing that seems to be built out of like the middle of this beast. And, and it's I, kind I of like this totally weird like hodgepodge up it to get a view of the area. Yeah, you could. Um, there are people around it that are, some of them kind of look like guards, um, but it's like a really uneven structure. It looks like a bunch of houses that are just kind of like smashed together and then mm. like welded or secured in different ways. Like San Francisco. So, a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's like, it's uneven enough and there's enough just kind of like random ledges that you'd be able to climb up. Not too difficult. Uh, it'd just be and a standard I, delve I test. If I were a pair of arms, where would I be? I would love to go to shop. Um, I know the answer to that, but I don't feel comfortable saying it out loud. So that's where we need to go. Okay. Who's doing what? What can for arms? I was just going to look around the shop and see if there is an extra pair of arms scurrying about. Okay. Yeah. Um, whoever's making a search for these arms, uh, just do a discern cursed. Um, or. Let's see the one. Most of the tests here are either going to be um, cursed or occult. So discern cursed or occult. Failure. I do not and find the arms. Difficulty? Uh, standard difficulty, yes. My attempts to think like the arms did not 
Did not help. No. Think like an arm, be like an arm, walk like an arm, arm, arm. Just like that song. Uh, just like the song. Is this uh, going to be a mind stress? Ha ha! Ooh, wow. Uh, and then this will be echo stress. Echo stress. So you both, as you're kind of like looking around, you both are hit by just like random gouts of steam and vents and things of things that are trying to kind of deal with the smells. Sure. And there's. Uh, what die size? Uh, if this area, I believe, is a D eight. Oh gosh, that's it should not the kind of. on Sir Galvin since he's made of steam, right? Powered by steam. Oh, okay. And My interdimensional bad. magic. That explains a lot more. Say he's hot headed. What's this? Uh, roll a D eight. Yes. This, this being made a uh, discern. Say discern, cursed, or occult. Okay. Well. I'm going to be uh, just looking for a shop that has flowers. Uh, or I guess it could be Hunt, too. Oh. Hunt is also technically tracking stuff. I am helping you. Why? Because I'm tired of hearing you ask yeah. people for flowers. Okay, that makes sense. I got April. some minor fallout, yes. Joe. So. For Echo. Echo minor fallout. Wait, okay. I was helping you. All right. Try that again. Roll a D10. I needed a minor mind fallout. Come on, game. I am going to use my special ability of dog I got horse too stressed and I got fallout from to too stress. Theo mind fallout. Oh, man. There we go. Hey. Do you have a special ability that does that? No, I don't. Just tells <laughs> terrible jokes. That's it. Uh, <laughs> hurts my mind. What's red and bad for your teeth? Do we have two minor echoes? Hmm? A brick. Yeah. I, I, okay, so this first I one's know. being Galvin. Second one's going to be Dan. Oboes. Excellent. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get something horrible from this. Great. Place. What is that? I got boobos. I got, I got the blisters and bubbles. Okay. Oh, you so take I, an extra yeah. D4. There's blood split boils. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> Does that immediately deal damage to you? No, um, it's ongoing. Uh, so it's when I it triggers when I take blood stress. Okay. This might help you out. You might finally be able to take yeah. your <laughs> blood fallout. <laughs> okay. Uh, what the hell is Hexi? Uh, it backfired miserably, of course. So your vision swims as you start to perceive worlds other than your own layered on top of one another. Any action you take that requires accurate judging of distance, jumping, shooting, oops, running down a corridor becomes risky. Once per session, you see something useful. Ask the GM what it is. Okay. But uh, my character is completely built around shooting, so fuck. <laughs> There's probably not any shooting that you'll need to do. Well, I mean, I say that, but you guys. There's always a chance to shoot. That you need to shoot. Yeah, but uh, there's not like any real big fights that you should get into here. Not, not right, right now, at least. But this wasn't my yeah. man or mind misfortune I needed. So I still got to fuck up some yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, you are able to, there's plenty of strange doctors and things here, too, that would be able to, especially Echo, you can remove that here. Um, so like, only I would be able to find someone that could. Only I could halfway fix it. So yeah, you're, you're like the guy. Oh, shit, I can't remember things right now. Everyone knows who Elric of Melniborn is, right? The Ooh, the uh, author who did that did another series. Fuck, it's like the King of Swords or some shit. We're gonna go to uh, April, Genevieve. Your critical oh. success. So Ooh. you start looking, and you start looking in the shop, and you see he has a coat hung up, and Coram, the coat's it. got Thank hands going for. out of the, like the arm thing. So <laughs> it looks like it's just hiding inside of the coat that's on a rack. And you go, and you're able to grab it. Kind of wriggles, um, and as you pull them from the coat. It looks like it's just two arms with like a shoulder blade or they each have shoulder blades and there's like the skin and back of like where the ribs would kind of be that's like fused there so kind of weird kind of like a looks like it just would like sit on someone's back 
Um, Two arms and a trench coat. And then there's some like weird tendril-y things that look like they're kind of sharp in the center. Uh, But you find it, and they kind of start squirming around in your grasp. And he's like, ah, you found them! Uh, Take them, take them, get get away from me! He uh, he goes to reach for them, and as he reaches, you see he's got like this kind of like metal contraption thing on his wrist, and it does this like electrical shock, and the arms kind of seize up and then fall limp and then he uh, puts them back up on the wall and tightens it back down in the straps like, oh, thank you like, i guess that you guys found them you know it'll be a little bit cheaper uh they're pretty expensive but this one's an extra rowdy bunch so i'm trying to get rid of them grow a new pair grow grow yeah, yeah homegrown homegrown how uh that's Company secret. Trade secret. That's it. You know what? Fair. I think I'm better off not knowing anyway. Thank you. I probably do. Oh, do you know how I would heal these by any chance? And I'll point to my own uh, boobos that I've got all over my arms. Oh, God. Um, well, I'm telling you, just uh, let me pop them like there were some of that bubble wrap. There's several doctors, and he looks at these and like, this is a... Uh, not your typical injury. Yeah, there's, there's doctors around here that you'd be able to trade a bargain with. They'll buy a memory or two off of you and get it fixed right up. Um, or, you know, if you have anything normal to trade. I'd save your memories for exchanging for one of these things. And he points over to the weird cylindrical, cylindrical thing uh, with the tubes coming off of it in a shop. So you can get all sorts of wonders with this. So what is you, that? It lets you tap into the minds and memories and abilities of things that you wouldn't normally be able to access. Uh, mechanically, it lets you buy achievements and progress from other classes. Oh, so, oh. interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And it costs uh, mind stress. So basically, um, you can trade advances um like you can trade an advance from your class for a different class uh to exchange or you can buy a new one for extra damage so it's a d4 mind stress to trade um d6 to trade a major um or you can get a additional new one uh, a new minor advance from a different class without trading for a d8 mind stress and then you can do a uh major advance from another class with a d10 of mind stress well it sounds like i'm rolling for a new major attribute from another class (laughs) all right you can certainly do that like let's do it up (laughs) He looks you over and he's like, ah, oh, what are the hounds? I'm sure you've got some tasty memories in there. Some, yes. Some others, not so much. Uh, they just have to be powerful. It doesn't matter if they're good or bad. Give them the memory where you killed all those orphans. <laughs> if you get a uh, particular... If you roll max damage on it, I'll say it's the one of the orphans. <laughs> Watch it happen. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Nice. I don't know what's more you almost, disrespectful. You, <laughs> you almost hear the screams of the orphans being crushed by a train as uh, they're extracted. So basically, he like kind of sticks this weird metal uh, thing. You see, like, he's holding. Um, think like uh you know those like lighters for grills that have like the little gooseneck thing it's like that Mm -hmm. uh but a little bit smaller it's got all sorts of these buttons and things that you can articulate how the gooseneck moves and he holds it and he just kind of wedges it up your ear um not very comfortable uh goodbye orphans goodbye (laughs) (laughs) and he extracts it and there's this weird like almost looks like a glowing like it's kind of like a liquid just dew drop almost and it's got all sorts of these like swirling lights and things coming out of it and you hear like this 
small cry of tiny voices as it's pulled away. And he plugs this into the machine and one of the little beads lights up. Well, now to see how bad this fallout's going to be. <laughs> Ten miles. I don't, I don't think it's going to be minor anymore. <laughs> It'll anyway. still count as your thing, though. Oh. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Nailed it. <laughs> Major mind fallout. All right. Yeah, I still, you can still take the, the advance for it, though. Um, yeah. You did it. Let's see just how wrecked I can make my character. Yeah, you no, know, what's going to be great is the next time you take mind stress, you're going to get a minor fallout. Like, that's absolutely oh, gonna probably. how that happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ready to see what okay. you got. I'm excited. Major mind fallout. I'm a little less than excited at this point somehow. Scarred. Your mind cracks and reforms in primal extinctive patterns. This functions as shaken. In addition, every time you encounter the source of the fallout from now on, the GM can ask you to make an endure check or suffer D8 stress to mind. So that probably won't happen. We'll have to see what shaken means, I guess. Or, I don't or know you get freaked out by the mind exactly. by the memory merchants. Yeah, as long as I don't see memory merchants again, you know. No, you're I think we're of... no, you're, you're going to have this. Bunch you're you're going to have this repressed, painful, but you don't know the source of it. Like reaction to orphans. I love that. Oh so gosh. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, violence. orphans just like have this nine terrifying hole in your head so you shaken says you panic and fall back on your primitive impulses the gm chooses one fight attack the problem flight get away from the problem or freeze <laughs> every time you see an orphan you're every time i see an orphan <laughs> you're driven to fight it <laughs> run from it or just freeze up every kid you see on the street you're gonna ask him what's your opinion of batman <laughs> <laughs> Do you know your mommy and daddy? <laughs> Who would you your mommy and daddy right? love you. <laughs> so yeah, um, put that you are afraid of orphans now. And yeah, I'm definitely going to have to find a way to get rid of this. I'm just going to go ahead and put shaken <laughs> on my character as well. So uh, I can remember what it do. Hey there, lollygaggers. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the party. Uh, uh, they just showed up too late to see me destroy my character. Yeah, Dan just <laughs> took a major fall. But He's now afraid of you orphans. Do, you do get to pick up a major advance from any other class that you want. Oh, let's kick ass. You should take the advance that I got that lets you eat shit. <laughs> Could be lunch buddies. Mm hmm Um, Yeah. Now, before we Let's skedaddle, see. I want to ask this guy if there are any bookstores or like religious areas or any kind of temple. Um. Okay. Yeah. So you ask that, and he says, "Oh, like, uh, you see that?" And he points the like that center table that I said, Garrison. That's a uh, archives. That's where a lot of Ooh. memories are kept. Um both on paper or in machines similar to this. Um, and uh, what I hear is they're trying to figure out a way to extract memories from uh, this thing. And he like taps his foot on the ground. Uh, there's like open ice here in the shop. And he's pointing down at like a tentacle of this ancient beast thing that's kind of woven through. Some say that there's part of its brain enough that we're able to get something from it, but uh, we're not allowed in there. Um, but if you can find a way in, there's probably all sorts of cool stuff in there. Hey, Zarl, you want to eat some giant ancient whale brains? I am slightly agitated that you even had to ask that. Of course yeah, I fair. do. Fair, fair. All right, I think I'm Zero. done here. Zarl going to speak whale? I'm going to speak <laughs> whale, and I'm going to learn to do a whole lot of shit with a bunch of tentacles. D Kinky? <laughs> I'm once again slightly agitated that you even had to ask that uh, let's try and keep track of what 
We've already got a cheat tier two. Um, but yeah, so you see, this is one of the only buildings too in the entire area that like has kind of guards posted on it. Um, and they appear to be hounds uh, or of the hound order. Uh, it's probably why you ran into some. This might have been like one of the shifts leaving. Um, going back on the train. I see guys similar to such. There are three posted around. There, Some of them are kind of like not really paying that much attention. Looks like not many people kind of walk over here, but they kind of like glare at people as they get too close. But um, it's a giant building. Seems to be, and again, as I described uh, to Zerl before, it's like this giant tower that's made of a whole bunch of smaller buildings that are just kind of fused together. Um, so there are like entrances on many floors and there's windows all over the place. Um, but it looks like there's kind of like this big main guarded entrance on the bottom floor. We, uh, are we going in there? Where? You need to go in there? To, to the big not building. Oh, was anyone... Was anyone doing anything with the arms? Yeah, yeah Genevieve Absolutely. had them installed. Absolutely not. I thought Zero wanted them. <laughs> I don't. They're a little too sentient for me. You know what? I've already wrecked my character, so let's put some more arms on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that it's Yay. a harder time shooting, you need two more arms to shoot more. Okay. Well, no, you've got an you've got a backup gun, right, Dan? So now, yeah, you can. I do. I've got two yeah, guns too. Perfect. With your hex eye too, Dan. Uh, one thing that you're seeing a lot because you're seeing like alternate realities kind of line up and stuff. Uh, occasionally, you don't really see any of the buildings out of this, and you see like the lake is not frozen, and you see this beast below you still crawling. It's got a large center eye. And it's kind of hard to tell what it was with the whole bazaar built on top of it, especially with this large structure over the center of its mass. But it looks to be like this gigantic ancient squid-like creature with this huge center eye and got tentacles coming out from the bottom of it. It's got this strange kind of like sharp and then spinning spiraling head. And it's just locking eyes with you every so often. And your okay. eye steps back into it and you see all the real world again. Right. Are, are you eyeballing Concerning. that, Theo? It sees me. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, <laughs> if you're wanting to, uh, he says, like, oh, because you guys found them, and I'm kind of trying to get rid of them. I'm trying to get them off my hands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, but, I uh, joke. <laughs> we'll do this for... Wow. A, and uh, he's willing to part with them for a D6 of pretty much any resource. Anyone's got that. <laughs> Here, I have this bag of crystals. All right, there Sacrifice we go. Sacrifice my crystals from the singing cave. This is like, oh, where, oh are these from Grip? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he just like smashes them with his arm and just snorts them all oh, the line. Oh, goodness, like, I was hoping. They're yours. Were drugs the whole time. <laughs> God dang it. Ah. <laughs> uh, that train ride could have been way more fun. Damn. <laughs> They're not drugs to everyone that does that. Oh. It's like artificial nose and taps it. And uh Everything brings you he over. He just snorts them and then blood he flies out. He <laughs> <laughs> snorts jagged. You just hear like a like a sink blender sound or like a garbage disposal <laughs> sound. The neutron ninja is a coffee <laughs> grinder inside his nostril. <laughs> yeah. I got one installed in my sinuses. <laughs> This baby will do straight rocks. And, uh... <laughs> also good when I need to grind some herbs. Poppy. Oh. Never That'd congested really anymore. <laughs> You're just stuffing straight coffee beans coffee. up your nose just and boop, grinds boop, them boop, all boop, out. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah. Goes in one side, comes out the other. No, it, doesn't, yeah. it, doesn't go, it doesn't come out. <laughs> you can just sit that way. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, um, Dan. With uh -huh. that, he uh, he says, "Like, do you want them?" And he kind of looks over you, like, "Where would you prefer these 
Uh, some people kind of do them like on top, uh, but other people don't like them beneath. Uh, I really any preference. I really have a suggestion here, and and and, and you know, Theo, this is. I'm tired. I'm like, listen, don't you, if you don't want to go with my idea, it's I, <laughs> I understand, but just love how concerned John looks. Butt cheek arms. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. I, I, I'm waiting for it. I expected I, this. <laughs> Close enough to your spinal column. Perfect yeah, way to I grab know. ass. Yeah. I don't I don't know about that one though. I was thinking like up top so they can be like holding gun mm -hmm. turret, you know, arm cannon things or you know. Mm -hmm. Chet, just Chet says him. your pants will fit like a glove. I ah, think that they Lord. wouldn't fit ever again somehow. <laughs> You'd be like what me in just abandoned pants. Atlas he was able to put <gasps> both of them on the same oh side of your body. God. Just we found the use on for them finally. And one on the other. I don't know what Sir Galvin. I I think that was an actual idea. What did you say? <laughs> I, I, what if it could just be three arms on one side and one arm on the other? You could get another set then. Room for funny. expansion. You'd have like one, and then you just like have a trench coat. <laughs> it's like arm, arm, arm. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a d6 to make up my mind, and I was going to go with whichever one it was. And it, it, I put six up there because I've been rolling hot tonight as the butt. So I got I got up top. Are you getting butt arms? No, no. I went one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Well, so I've basically been rolling like, back dice oh, tonight, oh, so oh. I gave you the best odds for the worst oh, outcome. That. Oh, wait, yeah, one, two. The, okay, the, so they're the like... Neck. So and they're, they're like, like on your back, but angled up. So they're above your arms, pretty much. Yeah, why? Well, that'll look totally natural. Yeah. So if you're trying to conceal them, you'll look maybe a little hunched or something. But uh, yeah, that, that's basically the idea. It's like he's got huge yeah. shoulder pads. Mm -hmm. It's like all right, uh, might hurt a little bit, but uh, oh, I'm sure it's been that kind of day. So if you want to lay down here. And uh, directs you over. He's got kind of like this surgical like table. Uh, straps you down to it. Give me an endure cursed test. Perfect. I've got this. I've got none of those. Might uh, take one of our uh, yeah, one of our bonuses here. Perhaps. Nice. Hooray! Good wow. thing happened. Critical success. All right. Uh, I'll tell you what, with a critical success, so there's three parameters to these arms, and I'll let you choose how one of these parameters lands, and we'll roll for the other two. Um, oh boy. So, the three parameters of these arms are their bravery, how cooperative they are, and how talkative they are. <laughs> uh, it's a spectrum. So, uh bravery is like how willing they are to pick a fight or run from a fight um with you on them uh cooperative is just like kind of any other task how willing they are to go along with it uh if they're not very cooperative they'll start trying to like do things on their own uh if they're very cooperative they're basically are just complete extensions of yourself uh and then talkative is how often they're going to try to like tell you to do something or sign to you and stuff like that so I'll let you choose yeah. one of those, and you can choose like where you want it to fall on the spectrum. You have thing right. arms. What's that? You have thing arms. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Right. I feel it's like at the risk of them like with a spoon. <laughs> right. At, at the risk of them like choking me out or you know poking me in the eyes and things like that, I might go with cooperative. Okay. And then just max that out. Yeah, we'll have them be real okay. cooperative, and then like we'll be shifty. Like we're gonna go horrible on everything else, probably. Okay. And the life. other two. So roll me two d six. So excited. Uh, which will you tell me? Is it good to be high or low? No, don't tell me. Actually, we'll just <laughs> middle of the road. Okay, you're you're in the middle on both, so that's good. Okay. So basically, it's like one. There, it's a three tier like spectrum, and one two. 
is like bad. Three four is neutral, and five six is good. So, if I would have known that, um, I would have just rolled ones and twos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the you max out cooperative. So arms are loyal and will always do what is asked, um, and they won't try to like ever disobey or anything like that. Uh, so on bravery. That's uh, the important one. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, like, really the worst part of the cooperative, you would have to, like, break them in, in a way, to eventually get them to do what you want, and they'd be, like, almost detrimental to you for a while. <laughs> but you could eventually <laughs> get them to be friends, but hand. that's definitely the worst one to be bad at. Uh, so you rolled neutral on bravery, which means the arms will go along with nearly everything that the player is willing to do. Um, Maybe not the orphan killing. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good one to not roll too high on because if they're too brave, the arms are willing to take fights that the player may not want to. Um, <laughs> oh, geez. That would have been fun. And, <laughs> and then talkative. Uh, arms occasionally chime in and offer suggestions. Okay. So, Good deal. They're going to tap uh, me on one my and two, own they're shoulder. Like pretty and, much and they're going to yeah. tap me on my own shoulder and point at things. Yeah, they'll like tug on you and just point at something or they'll like give you numbers or suggestions and stuff and kind of like sign at you. They're going to, they're going to write letters onto my back to tell me words. <laughs> Theo got his yep. own pet in a way. He did. I did. He really did. <laughs> and so the arms too, like when they first, they're kind of like not colored. Like they're very like pale, almost greenish in hue. And there's like this kind of slight sliminess to them. Um, not like nothing really gets on your hand, but they're like clammy in a way. Um, but after they fuse to you, they get like a little bit of color and it almost looks like they're slightly changing your skin tone. Um, and he says like, oh yeah, over the next few days, they'll eventually look just like the arms you've already got, but it takes Hooray, a while to I think. kind of kick in. Yeah, sorry. they're pretty close to you. Uh, if it would have gone on you and he points it over at Zero, like they, they eventually would sprout hair and stuff too, but nice. uh, it takes a while. It looked weird on you for a while. But, uh, I would have gone with the butt arms. Yes. Yeah. We know. <clears throat> so, uh, mechanical thing right off the bat is that these arms will reduce your reload time by one on stuff, nice. and they will let you do a mastery die on strength tests. Nice. That's actually really cool. And then anything else that you could argue that, like, an extra set of arms would help you out on. You can do. So there's things that you can attempt that would probably be impossible or dangerous or risky before, but now that you've got two extra arms, is that? Uh, but trade off. Some people might mm -hmm. not treat you very <laughs> normally now that you've got these two uh, extra arms on there. Um, Aren't you the guy who killed all those orphans? No, not me. Jesus, what are those arms? <laughs> <laughs> what Historic. orphans? Yeah, that's an orphan. Uh, these uh, these are coming from a pretty like cursed place, so uh, people may be a little off put by your cursed dealings, and it kind of like lets people profile you as someone willing to do stuff that might not be good. <laughs> so, Don't worry, I'll give them the like, stare. Yeah, I get that joke, okay. sore loser. I get that <laughs> joke. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's make it over to. Uh, April. Yes. So you're told there's all sorts of fun stuff to find inside of the archives, inside of this main spire in the center of town. <laughs> um, but it is being guarded by the hounds. Um, you may say they are stopping you from claiming knowledge. Uh, can we head over there? Are we done yeah. here? We're done here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how many guards are right by the front door? There's one that's like not leaving from it. There's three total. One of them's kind of like walking around and then the other one seems to be kind of getting distracted. He's constantly like running in the market, doing something. Sometimes he's back and seems to be like not taking it very seriously. But, uh, the one that's like at the door, just kind of standing ready, um, it's always there. Okay. 
And please remind me, how many actions do we have? Just the one? Um, so pretty much you get as many actions as you want. So uh, whenever you're doing an action, you're just saying like what skill you want to do. And then whatever you're doing it on determines the domain. And whenever you fail, that's when I get to do stuff to you. But if okay. you're succeeding, it's not anything. So, yeah. I think I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to shoot the guard that is standing just right at the front door. Just it's walk an up. Escalation. <laughs> I mean, he's in my go, way. You can't go that far that fast. He's in my way. Are the rest of us there, or you just wandered off to go shoot people by yourself? Yeah, that's your choice. I, I went to go start a fight. The hounds are oh. normally nice people. No, the I, dicks. Yeah, Except I for agree with that. I was I was Except keeping my me. buddy right. Theo company right. during his time of surgery. So Okay, so also that squid. would be a kill... Uh, kill, yeah. cursed, or... Um, Cult here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty yeah, much yeah. everything down here is crystal or cult. Genevieve, I would really be interested in watching them slice open Theo, but at the same time, if you would have tugged on my fur and been like, let's go cause trouble, would you have done that? I mean, probably. We are besties. All right. Yeah. Uh, we Genevieve go everywhere then. together. Yeah. No, that's totally fine. Okay. So yeah, uh, kill cursed or a cult. Uh, can I use? Do we have any more banked advantages? Yes, three more. Yeah, I think you guys have a bunch. Where we're getting low. Okay. Uh, two uh, more. I'll now save this one. Will be one. Are you using it? Uh, I'm gonna save it. Oh, okay. I'll save it. Success. Success. Okay. Uh, what are you attacking with? Uh, blunderbuss. Blunderbuss. Okay. Just waltz up to him. <laughs> yeah, just straight. <laughs> no hesitation. Okay. Uh, three. All Does right. Does it smell like sulfur to you? Bang! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, is this the way to get shot. inside? Yeah. Uh, everyone that's not there would probably hear a shot ring out. Uh, <laughs> a blunderbuss. <laughs> Maybe a blunderbuss <laughs> that you guys have heard before. You can assume that's not us. Or you know it's not me. I don't use guns. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Oh, yeah. Uh, look with Theo. <laughs> he's like, he kind of like looks at you as you're walking up. He's like, hey, you can't come in here. And then you blow a hole at him. Uh, he soaks one point of that. Um, so you'd like kind of take a lot of that shot into his side. He seems to be bleeding, uh, but he's still got a decent amount of health left. Uh, and he calls out for the rest of his friends to show up, but you haven't failed a test yet, so like no stress has been applied yet or anything okay. like that. Listen, uh, so you're free okay. to go again. I'm not arguing. This uh, or uh, Zerl, if you're jumping in too. I mean, I will, but I'm still confused, but. <laughs> we what? want to get inside, right? Could have asked. Eh. Oh, uh, good point. All right, I'll go punch him. <laughs> okay. Do I uh, kill Cursed Oracle? Okay. Success at a cost. Oh. Okay. D8 here as well. Um, and this will be... Listen, that's real. I don't think there's a particular one that you need. So, yeah. ah, Blood. Hey. Do you have any blood protection? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. It soaked it all. Okay. But I still got right. a little stress, right? Uh, if you don't, if none of it gets marked, you don't have to roll right. uh, your fallout. Yeah. So, yeah. Only when your stress increases. Um, yeah. So you take that. He, like, kind of swings at you. Looks like you went to pull out a knife, but doesn't really make any contact with it. He's just really kind of caught off guard. Oh, that is one piercing as well. One piercing, okay. And, yeah, you take a swipe at him. You cut him, like, on the neck. He's still up. Uh, I'm also going to yell out, uh... Calvin! Calvin! 
At the thought of Galvin getting hurt, I'm going to join Galvin. (laughs) I'll go outside hearing my name called Theo. Are you good or? So you see, uh, Genevieve is like reloading her blender bus. (laughs) Uh, Zerl has blood on his claws, and you see a hound with. Looks like he's taking a shot to his side, and he's got a cut in his neck, and he's fumbling for his pistol and for his knife. Mm. Uh, and you hear footsteps of another hound running up. What is going on out here? I don't know. We need to get inside. Genevieve says it's a good idea. Who am I Did to argue you with ask? Genevieve? Why would I ask? I don't know, because they're there. Can you just do something about him, please? Please? Pretty please? With cherry on top? What about him? This is how she I'm very gets sorry me to do shit for too. my Just friends. Give in, Galvin. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about a lemon tart? Lemon no. Tarts are good. <laughs> lemon tarts are great. It is good. But uh it's terribly sorry, sir. There's been a bit of a misunderstanding here. Can I take another shot at the guard yep. at this point? Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. It was kill cursed, correct? Leave you yes. unsupervised okay. for five <laughs> minutes. Oh, I failed. Failure. Oh, whoopsie. All right. I'm too busy D8. trying to convince Sir Galvin to fight this guy mm-hmm. for me that I miss because I'm in the middle of aiming and talking over here. <laughs> That's it. It is a D8 of blood. Oh. So he takes a shot back at you. Uh, that was a failure. He calls out, you're not allowed in the archives. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> that one showed up, so you get to soak one of that. Oh, my gosh. No oh, fallout. No fallout. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, he is still Incredible. up, though. Shot rain out. Uh, the other one has showed up now. Two hounds. Genevieve, are we doing this? I mean, they're in our way. You I could mean, talk to them. Maybe we don't speak the same language. Hi, hello. Do you speak? Do you it's a little right, right now. <laughs> The guy who's running I'll around. let you do a compel. It'll be risky. <laughs> I'll, I'll try it. Uh, and Cursed, you said is the domain? Yeah. All right. Cursed or yeah. occult. This is going to go super good. Yeah. So <laughs> that. D8 blood. Plus an additional D4 blood with your... Uh, yeah. I think that's the D- additional... All right. It's five. Uh, it isn't piercing. Okay. I just take a shot at you, but then you, you get an additional D4. Three, so eight total. All right. Uh, and it's uh, blood, you said? Yeah, a lot of blood. Okay. It's a shot pings at you. All right, so that's going to be eight total? Mm-hmm. What if I run out of blood boxes? I don't know. <laughs> it makes it really hard to pass your, your stress test. <laughs> if, do you, you probably automatically take a fallout and then that's a major you, fallout. Yeah. Yep. I would probably yeah, would make sense. Okay. Still will count as your minor that you needed. Yeah, uh, but you get to clear all your stress now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, major blood fallout. Let's see what you get this time. Critical injury. Oh, yippee! I think it hit somewhere vital. Uh, you pick a skill that I have access to, and I no longer have access to that oh. skill. Ooh. So, uh, Let's take a look, yeah. Joe. How sinister that take a look was is fantastic. Mm. 
Listen, I just gotta ask, Devoran, have you you sent your bees to sting Theo's eyeballs yet? <laughs> Uh, upon seeing upon seeing this massive wound that Galvin has just taken, I'll be like, <clears throat> Theo, how's the surgery coming along? Right. Can you uh, use guns with those arms immediately? <laughs> yep. Uh, not really. <laughs> So well, still still the, you've got the hexi thing, but you do get a mastery die. Uh, I'll see you get a mastery die as you. What's that? Them now. Uh, I'll give you a mastery die, but you still got your hexi thing going on. Oh boy! Ma- uh, mastery uh, and then I'm going to say you lose that steam thing for oh. now. Oh wait, okay. That reduces damage around you. Uh, is that? Oh, a, I thought it was a That's an ability. Yeah. Skills are like compel, delve, endure, evade. Oh, is it? Yeah. Only it's skills. Only the skills. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, if it's only skills, I'm going to take off your ability to endure. Okay. Ooh, that's a hit for the tank. Genevieve! Say I'm sorry, but I'm You'll not. Get back. Um, yeah. Genevieve, look what I learned from from Devoran. And then I flex my pecs real hard and flick some of my my butter at the guy who's charging at us. That way the swarm of flies that hang around me go over there and do stuff to him. Like okay. fly up his who's eyeballs. Who's doing what test? Uh, I don't know. I can use my swarm as a, a piece of equipment once per delve. Okay. Is it a... Well, it's, it's not really technically a delve that we're on. Well, I mean, just once, like, but per... I guess. Until we finish per session. Once per, uh, once per session. Oh, once until the next delve Yeah, is... until we okay, start the next delve. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, um... Is it? Uh, are you doing this like as a kill? I don't want to kill him, but I do want to stop him. I can always try and stare him down. Will compel work? Sure. Yeah, I'll let you uh, deal stress at him as a compel. Uh, it will be risky if you do it as a compel. Okay. Curse still. I'll take it. Six X of the cost. And that's uh that's a D eight on this the is going to be that I do. Yeah, D eight, it's gonna be blood. Oh, I the D eight I also do D eight to him when that's a six. But I take Okay. One stress. Thanks. Oh, okay. Cool. And my so, did a yeah, it six do stress on him? Okay. Um, he's still up with that. Yes, I can go give him the crazy eye. Still up. He looks like he's pretty worn down. Um, if someone else is doing something. Is the guy that I initially oh. shot still up? I'm going to kick yep. off my steam vents. <laughs> okay. I'll let you do the scene vent, so then, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he is still up, uh, yes. Genevieve. Okay, I'm going to take another shot at him, but I'm going to use unorthodox methods to say that my result is a six. Therefore, I succeed, but at a cost. Okay. Uh, roll that uh, at a cost. What do the D8? do? Ed's just uh, reduces okay. damage. Oh, actually, it's going to be D6, because you're D6. in the steam, so, yeah. So take a D6 stress. It's going to be blood as he fires a shot at you. Uh, I ran out of boxes. <laughs> so I, think, uh, <laughs> I think that's also a major. I was going to say, I or, shouldn't have rolled it minor. anyway. Minor? Oh. Yeah. 
I think you just like have to roll at that and then take a minor. Mm-hmm. So really that'll be minor blood. Joe's ability to main manage chaos tonight. <laughs> I want bit. this guy gone. <laughs> oh, hang on. Uh, oh, where did that from? Let me look at that. Yeah. There's just an empty one there for some reason. Minor. What kind of fallout was this? Uh, this will be. This is minor blood. So this will be shattered. Ooh, that Let's sounds bad. See. Shattered. Your armor is no longer shattered. of use. You cannot use blood protection. Oh no. Yeah. And that'll include um, whatever buff you get from Galvin as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. But. Uh, you're automatically succeeding, so you get to roll damage on your weapon. I should probably do that, huh? And with that, you you get like hit, you're kind of knocked down, and your blunderbuss is just under his chin. You fire, and his head balloons <laughs> off. <laughs> yes! And drops dead. There goes my beat! <laughs> That's enough that the other hound runs off. Phenomenal. Uh, because of that compel, the other one like gave up. It's like, I don't want to die, man. <laughs> this is not worth that. So, so all right. what did you need to get Archive in here store for? is open. Uh at this point, can I oh what's the name of it? I can I cast Mark a Shadow? So that I can sure. sneak. Okay. So it just, it's an automatic, I think, question mark. Or do I need to roll for it? it uh, say. Does it say that you have to make a test? No, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. It just happens. Okay. So hiding from someone or something is always a standard action, never risky or dangerous. So I'm going to waltz right in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, make a sneak occult or cursed. Uh, let's do success. All right. Uh, Galvin, you got your blood thing. Um, And that was a major thing, right. too. So, yeah, you make it in. Um, so the door is like, it was cracked open just a little bit. Um, didn't look like it at first, but like it wasn't completely latched. Um, so you're able to open it. You make your way in. It's pretty dim inside. Uh, you see like, it's pretty much been hollowed out the whole way. And there's just these winding like railings. You see ladders kind of scaffolding between different levels. Uh, you see just dozens and dozens and dozens of those kind of metallic canisters that were in the shop that have all sorts of these little glass beads that are lit up with different memories from people. Uh, and then you see there's a big iron hatch on the bottom of the floor. Uh, the floor is not ice in here. It is like part of the structure, uh, where there's ice on the outside. So it looks like they have dug down into the ice and made it a structure like into this creature. So you don't know exactly where that leads, but you do see like this big Strong, like strong, sturdy, latched door there. Mm-hmm. Oh. I suppose. Is anyone see, coming? You all in see uh, Genevieve I'm just stealth in. Uh, uh, oh, and the other I'm thing you know outside. you make it in. No one seems to notice you. Um, so you just get a success. You do see there are people that are just kind of like walking around the inside. Uh, None of them notice you or turn around, but um, they seem to be people wearing similar like kind of attire to that man that was on the train with you. Uh, they're just kind of like walking around, sliding these like little beads out and like inspecting them a little bit and putting them back in and marking things down. Uh, back outside, uh, who's doing what? Uh, oh, Theo, the shooting's over. Um, I think we're stealing memories though, so. When you're good, come oh, on. Oh, good. Just kind of want to like, yeah. 
I will wait outside and just I'm waiting <laughs> to see what happens next. I don't know if they're going to need help or if there's going to be reinforcements coming. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on things. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. not going to let Genevieve. Uh, I'm going with Genevieve. I don't know what kind of trouble she's in for, but I'm in for it. And I see a lot of the people in the surrounding so area right. have kind of like cleared out. A lot of the shops have like drawn their shutters down just around this sort of thing. Um, and a few people are like, why are you picking fights with the hounds? Like, they don't like when members of their own are, are killed and they're all it's like, it's not my problem. And it's shutting down, drawing shutters and things. And uh, it's kind of just like this perimeter of vacancy around the spire now. But uh, no one immediately running up to like do anything to you guys. Uh, so who was going in? You said Zerl you were going in? Yeah, yeah, I'm following Genevieve. Okay, anyone that's going in, unless you're not trying to, you can make a stealth cursed or, um, uh, cursed or occult. What did you do? I didn't do anything. That wasn't me. Uh, success at success a cost. cost. Okay. That size. So, uh, is D8. This is going to be Echo. Oh, I haven't taken Echo. Yep. I'm going to take four so you... stress. Minor fallout. All right. Minor Echo fallout. You guys are getting all sorts of goodies today. <laughs> if only I needed it. Conduit. I do. Your best efforts to keep the unreal energies of the heart at bay are futile your body is a crucible for strangeness i'll say that again you <clears throat> cannot use echo protection ongoing okay so you feel something like kind of tugging you feel like you're being watched as you enter um but you don't really see by what you see there's people up on the balconies that uh, again resemble kind of the attire that uh, the man on the train was wearing, but none of them have turned to see you. You don't feel like anyone sees you, but you still get this like feeling that something knows that you're here. Uh, yeah, if they see me, I'm gonna see them right back. What's that? I'm gonna smell the air and activate my twisting territory ability. What does that do? Uh, I get to ask the GM who's in charge of the immediate area around me. Uh, okay. This is, I gain an intuitive understanding of the apex predator or alpha creature, whether that's a person or beast in the local area. But when I use this ability, the target gets the uncanny feeling that they're under threat. Okay. <laughs> I know who's in charge. Squid. They are now squid. In. Squid. Yeah. It's uh, you would learn pretty much immediately that the thing under the ice is not a corpse. Oh, Genevieve, uh, we're fucked. It is just <laughs> frozen. Like so, you assume like it's just a dead corpse, right? Like that's what it looks like. It's the corpse of the squid thing. Uh, but it's still alive, and it can regenerate. It's just they've dug the spire into its head to keep it from growing back all the way and, like, fully healing. Uh, but it's still alive, and this is basically like a tumor in its head. Uh, and it's still aware of you, and now senses something. But it's, like, kind of... It's not really able to move too much uh, physically, because it's suspended ice, but there's uh, other things it could do. Genevieve. And it's where have you? The fucking squid's in charge here. In charge? It is. It's it's at least because uh, it said like the apex predator thing that's like so it's, it's, most dangerous, yeah, right? Let me, me reread that for you. A squid sees everything. You fought tooth squid and nail in the tunnels and pits to defend what's yours. I gain the worn domain. Do I have the worn domain? I do. Okay, cool. Uh, once per situation, I can ask the GM who's in charge of the immediate area around you. 
By smell, Ooh. sight, or some other esoteric sense, you gain an intuitive understanding of the apex predator or alpha creature, whether that's a person or beast in the local area. When you use this power, the target gets the uncanny feeling that they're under threat. So, okay. yeah, I get a sense that the squid's alive. So is the... So is the who's in charge and the apex predator two separate things Different. or is it just like well, those I are mean, two different things you gotta look at it as like uh through like animal instincts kind of thing mm -hmm. like who is the most dangerous to me i think is how i would interpret okay it. that's kind of how i did as yeah. well so yeah definitely a squid oh, it's alive um, we fucked up i have the seen smell and stuff is just that going. like it basically just has opened wounds that are trying to heal back that are constantly being like cut back away by what's going on in here. That's the sense that you get. Gruesome. Uh, fuck. Fuck, fuck. I just, I, I, I just need to find something while we're here and then we could go. We don't, we don't have to fight the squid. We can just leave it alone. That's not our problem. Um, there's a big ugly trapdoor over there. I assume that's how we get to it. Let's just not go down there. Okay. Let's find whatever it is you're looking for and then make like a tree. Okay. Okay. A well I'm going to use because that's what I am. Mm -hmm. Yummy. <laughs> I'm going to use oh, my mark of hunger. Um, I can taste power slumbering in the city beneath. So I can smell sources of magical power. Literally so and figuratively taste. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So take a nice deep whiff and see if it you leads might. me to any kind of artifact or information or book or whatever. Okay. Uh, you are overpowered, like almost as you're taking it in at first and your senses are just kind of pinging all over the place. But as the kind of like simmers and you're able to stress this down a bit um you feel like pretty much everything that you're going after everything that's useful for you would be underneath this hatch uh and there is some stuff up here and there um you know that there's there seems to be information that may be useful to you that's like on these little clipboards that these guys are holding um that are up on the railings above you um but Looks like all of these kind of machines that have the memories and beads in them, they're all kind of connected to a network, and that network goes underneath. Oh, we need to go down. Oh, oh, Zerl. Zerl, I lied. We gotta go. All right. <sighs> Presuming, Genevieve, that you would tell me the weird shit that you just figured out. I'm going back outside and get the rest of the crew. <laughs> all right, Listen. I know entering went a little sideways. You think? Yeah, I did. Not my <laughs> choice this time. As you're like standing on the corpse of the, of the guy. Not the my choice. Like I did not start Bleeding this fight. from a wound. And... But uh -huh. listen, Genevieve and I go back a long ways. Genevieve says go. I trust that Genevieve means go. But so the squid's alive. Mm -hmm. And all these memories that they're stealing and shit, they're feeding into the squid. That, that is unacceptable. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Shit's fucked <laughs> they're up. They're guarding evil. Oh boy. Here we go. Yeah. And with that, time. End of session. All right. We did it. Hooray. Yes. Owie. All right. I just like that Genevieve chose violence today. Thanks for letting me cause havoc. <laughs> I got a major yeah. beat out of it. So. You did. Oh, shit. Yeah. She had to kill someone who's trying to stop her from claiming knowledge. Uh, oh, well, so, we kind of let that happen then. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Excuse me, yeah. ma'am. This is off limit. Bam. <laughs> It didn't yeah. necessarily have to be in the middle of the street. <laughs> it could have been right? one of the people inside, but you know, hey, it works. Theatrics. It works. It's true. Um, I think pretty much the only two beats that didn't get met. So uh, you haven't yet found a helpful text exactly, um, but you'll find that next time, uh, Genevieve. And Zero, oh, you weren't able to find, uh, okay, okay. you weren't able to get like a cocktail fighting That's move fine. or legendary beast named after yeah. you. We didn't make Although it to Grover's are... yet, so. Right, haven't made it to Grover's yet, uh, but you did find a legendary beast, so 
Wait, that's not all we I'm... need is a flag. Oh, caution, Zerl. It's not here. one of them, but I'm just saying, like, you did find a legendary beast, and you need to get a legend, either a fighting move or a legendary beast named after you. Oh, okay. What's all this squid Zerl Zerl pod. Nice. Yeah. Could work on that. But, um, thanks, Joe. Then, uh, Dan, <laughs> I, I didn't gain the uh, favor of anybody today. I don't think so. Your new that arms. guy that you um, bought from, bought the arms from, uh, technically you got favor from him, and his oh, faction is the merchants. So oh, good. Well, I decided, and I'll have to double check with this on. You know, I think I know what uh, what I should take for my my uh, my what is it? The major perk. Mm-hmm. Should come out of. I'm thinking. I'm picking heretic. Oh, I God. Like that. Okay. And uh, it's the oath of tenacity, and it's any time you succeed at a risky action, increase the size of the stress die you inflict by one step. Ooh. That's badass. You succeed at a dangerous action, increase the size of stress by two dice. That's badass. Because basically, all of my useful actions at this point are going to be risky. Why not just lead into it until yeah, yeah. until That's the Vorans get some bee stings in your eyeballs? Can he can he fix a fallout though? Uh, uh no, you can make it yet. easier to get a fallout fixed. Um, so like, because he can do bending stuff. So, uh, kind of like how I rolled with um genevieve or april's character uh because he did some healing on her before she saw the doctor it made it a d6 yeah. instead of a d8 to clear so so that type of thing part two of the question is if i take a major would i be able to use minor to buy minors in that major uh you'd have to do it with more memories here damn yeah because technically you don't have the minors like available to you to purchase with your beats even the, the miners of the major just to be right i i know what you mean yeah okay but you you could but you'd have to do it with more memories time to over. go sell some more shit <laughs> so uh i have a quick question for the uh bubbles the the boils and that yeah since that was triggered does that one keep going because it's ongoing or does it go away after that uh so if it goes away after triggering, it's immediate. If it's okay. ongoing, it means you have it until you expend a resource to okay. heal it. Okay. So Just if you go to anywhere that um, basically there's different types of like doctors or hunts that can heal different types of damage. So if you make it to one that can do blood healing because uh, it's a blood fallout, then you can expend a resource to either heal stress with him or clear your fallouts. Okay. So. And there's plenty of doctors of all kinds in this town that are willing to trade resources, but most of them want memories and stuff. Although memories could be better spent on uh, getting crazy abilities. <laughs> um, so how much does it kind of cost me to get two miners? <laughs> in that? I, so it depends on if you're willing to trade in advance or if you're just trying to outright buy them. Um, cause outright buying them is D eight mind stress. Uh, but if you're trading, it's a D four mind stress. What do you guys think? Go, go ham. Says, oh, yeah. Every time someone says mind stress, I always immediately go to mind freak with Chris angel. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Do you think I can get by with rolling two D eights? I will say too, there's a uh, different type of fallout you can take eventually from doing the procedure too many times. So, oh boy, I might just uh, do a, a, a trade funny. in this case. Yeah, I can just trade the two miners. I got. I just want two though. Okay. Yeah, we'll be able to do that um, next time. You can for sure like go back. Okay, back I'll think about it some more. One transaction. Yeah. Up to you for sure. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much everyone's things though. Uh John, you finally got your minor I blood. I finally fallout. did, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for letting the major count for the minor. <laughs> yeah. 
I I feel like that's only fair. Otherwise, it'd be yeah. so difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, you got both of yours. Jake got both of his. Mm-hmm. April's got her major at least, not the minor. Um, and Zerl got one. Uh, Dan got both of his. So yeah. Uh, next time we'll venture further into the repressed strange mind of the squid thing see what it's all about um see if anyone shows up to do something about the guys that he just murdered in the street uh (laughs) we'll go from there but uh yeah that's all i have so what have you got going on for the rest of the channel uh yeah so tomorrow at 1 p.m central uh dan i think it's just you and i from this group we're doing so oh you're not even there tomorrow dan oh i gotta miss tomorrow uh, i would normally be there yeah so tomorrow 1 p.m central over on grim and perilous plays i am running some tales from the loop uh make sure you check that out uh tomorrow night at 9 p.m central over on goodman games official myself dan jake and joe Uh, We're going to be playing some Weird Frontiers. Bert is running that for us. Um, And then every single Wednesday, we're doing our Alien campaign, All Fear of the Ishtar. Uh, Every single Friday, Joe is here running this for us. It's our heart campaign. Uh, But the new cool thing that we have is John's Pathfinder campaign, YouTube exclusive. Comes out every Tuesday and Thursday on the Defenders of Cobalt YouTube channel. Uh, and we're doing it in bite-sized chunks, as uh, John puts it in Goblin Bites. Uh, 20-minute-ish per episode every Tuesday and Thursday. April's in it. I'm in it. Uh, Steven from the Lollygaggers, uh, my tray with John running it. John, what do you want to tell us about that campaign? Uh, we're just doing the, the, the Age of Ashes adventure path, and uh, it's going to go fine. Uh, it's not like the entire party of comprised of all gob oh wait it is comprised of all goblins it so it goes uh it's been going super well so far very it's great super great every day so good Thursday. i don't know that's what we got there's definitely going. not people swearing at dice oh wait for episode <laughs> oh, yeah. three i'm so excited for episode tuesday. three tuesday tuesday so where you get to hear my tray fucking curse out her dice on stream it's amazing <laughs> be good all right that's all I. Got. all right well yeah so lots of things going on here uh, tune back in next friday again for uh the next session here we'll see what other shenanigans and people we murder in the street and uh yeah see how much more fucked up dan gets from all <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say members. with dan being the way he is now it could be an orphan who knows <laughs> people we murder in the street those are prom things at least like i think you've got a lot of resources though to burn to like get rid of some of this stuff right oh yeah i don't Hopefully. actually have a lot on me at this point but i, we'll I fix can that make some as well yeah, okay. yeah yeah probably would be good yeah but uh all right. all righty so yeah thanks for watching everybody Goodbye. have a good night uh, we're going to read the run. Litching Hour playing Jackbox party games, nice. so stick oh, around for the raid. <laughs>